Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Joe Flash, and we're back with another reaction video. Continuing when we left off with the Mortal Kombat character franchise voice comparison reaction videos. For the next video, I've decided, well, excuse me, I had to take a few minutes to uh, decide who I wanted to do next because, you know, there's a lot of characters still left to try to go through for the Mortal Kombat series, so in the last video I did Kano, so I took a look to find out and think about who I wanted to do next, and out of decision, I've decided to do one of the sorcerers of Mortal Kombat, Shang Tsung. And even though Shang Tsung doesn't really get as much treatment like he used to back in the old days in Mortal Kombat, but he's still a classic villain character, you know, Shang Tsung will never get old, he's always been, you know, the original villain from the first Mortal Kombat game, and even if he wasn't the main villain anymore, Shang Tsung is always a classic villain who's just a sorcerer, he loves to steal souls, and can impersonate anybody, like, Shang Tsung's always been a pretty cool character, you know, in some ways, he's pretty awesome, and he's always pretty good villain, you know, he's got some pretty iconic lines, you know, and all that kind of stuff, so... You know, I just have to give Shang Tsung credit, you know? Shang Tsung really deserves much better credit than he kind of deserves, you know what I'm saying? I feel like Shang Tsung would be almost an underrated Mortal Kombat character nowadays, but he's pretty awesome, if you ask me. But anyway, without further ado, there's not much left to say. I'm gonna go ahead and find out who I think is the best Shang Tsung, or not is the best Shang Tsung, but who is one of my favorites on the list as Shang Tsung. So let's find out, shall we? There's, I'm pretty sure there's not gonna be too much on this list, but... Or maybe there will be. It's 7 minutes and 42, so maybe there'll be a few. But let's see who I will add to the list. So let's find out, shall we? Well, before I get into the video, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get a quick drink. Alright, I'm back. So, so, without further ado, let's go ahead and find out who I think is some of my favorites on the list with Shang Tsung, shall we? So let's find out. Like John Cena and Triple H always say, your time is up, my time is now. It's time to play the game. Let's go ahead and get into this, shall we? Shang Tsung, voice comparison. Updated or updated in five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Oh, I missed the button. <laughs> there we go. Comparing the voices of Shang Tsung. Should be coming, huh? I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of the way he looks in here, but that's still a good voice, so yeah, I'll give it a thumbs up. Not a bad voice. What the heck is that voice? No. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think Neil Ross is the same man who voiced the Green Goblin from the original 1995 Spider-Man the Animated Series show. I think it was in 1995, right? Yeah. If anybody remembers that series, uh, or what, let me check, what year was it? Okay, I was close. 1994. I said 1995, but close. 1994. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure Neil Ross is the same man who voiced the Green Goblin in the 1994 Spider-Man the Animated Series show, which is pretty much almost like everybody's favorite Spider-Man animated series show. Everybody really loves that series, even though that's an old series, but it is a classic series. I enjoy that series as well. I could probably watch that whole entire series if I could as well. Spider-Man the Animated Series in 1994 was a classic, and it is a still a big hit of a series even on to this day. But, yeah, I think Neil Ross, yeah, he was the one who voiced Green Goblin in that show, I believe. But here is Shang Tsung. What the heck is that voice? Like, that does not sound anything close to Shang Tsung at all. That just sounds like another character. Like, I get that the... I mean, I get with the look. I'm not even sure if I'm really a big fan of the way how Shang Tsung looks in here either. I mean, I get they're trying to make him look like Mortal Kombat 3 Shang Tsung, but honestly, I never really cared too much about that look of Shang Tsung. Mortal Kombat 3 Shang Tsung, I didn't really like it that much. I mean, it's okay, but 
Eh, I don't know if I'm real. I think I, prefer, I like Shang Tsung better where he doesn't have face paint on. I mean, I don't know if that's really face paint on him or not, but I didn't have, never really cared too much about Shang Tsung with face paint on in Mortal Kombat 3. I think I like him better without it, but seriously, what is the voice, though? Like, that doesn't even sound anywhere close to Shang Tsung at all. That just sounds like a totally different character that doesn't even match Shang Tsung at all. Look, Neil Ross, I like him better as the Green Goblin in the 1994 Spider-Man animated series show, but here is Shang Tsung. No, I'm sorry. Like I said, no disrespecting him, but that's just, that's not even a good voice for Shang Tsung. Like, I don't know what the heck that voice is. I, no. It's interesting he tried to voice him, but he really just didn't try hard enough with that voice. Like, listen to that voice. That how could you think that sounds like Shang Tsung? Oh. Yes. You know, this guy, Bruce Locke, I think that's how you say his name, Bruce Locke, he actually did a great job as Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat Conquest. That's a good series, even though it was only one season, but it was an entertaining series, and Bruce Locke was actually really good as Shang Tsung. I'm not going to lie. He, his performance was actually good. He actually did a great job as Shang Tsung. He really actually had the look for him with the facial hair and the hair. Not to mention his costume was pretty much basically like the same costume as uh, the 1995. I forgot his name, but I'm pretty sure he's going to be on this list. The 1995 Shang Tsung actor. That's pretty much the same costume he wore in the movie. But I like how his hair resembles more. It's like how he's got the hair and then, you know, he's even got the facial hair. And he really actually does pretty good. Like his performance is pretty good. Even at one point, my dad, when we were watching the series, my dad thought this guy was better as Shang Tsung than the 1995 actor. But, or, but we all agree that the 1995 actor was still the best Shang Tsung. But, you know, at one point, dad thought that this guy Bruce did a better job. But I will admit his performance is almost as good as the original 1995 actor. Almost, not as close as good as him, but as close as good enough that you know Bruce Lockie would definitely be my second favorite live action Shang Tsung. That's just what I have to say. Like, there's nothing more to say other than his performance was great. So, therefore, Bruce Lucky would definitely be my second favorite live-action Shang Tsung. I forget about a lot of these voice clips. It's so long since I hadn't watched that series. Not bad. Okay, sure. I'll give it a thumbs up to whoever this man is that voiced uh, Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat Deception. Wow, Shang Tsung is that his... He's in his actual form in this one. Wait, what? Oh, it must be two different Shang Tsung. Okay, yeah. Because if everybody's still, because a lot of people I feel like still forget that Shang Tsung's true form is actually him as an old man. He's actually really an old man, but he de but with him stealing souls and everything and all that, it's deformed his his old age to make him look younger. So you know he's really an old guy, but he with all him still with, with Shang Tsung stealing so many souls over the years, it's kept him at his young uh, adult man age. You know what I'm saying? So that's how he's able to still look like a younger guy, but it's really a much more older man than you think i'm pretty sure he needs souls to survive because otherwise if he's like this as an old man he could probably more likely die i mean he's fought as an older man before but i'm sure he would probably have a better chance of dying as an older man if he was to be in this true form of his in the first mortal kombat game he was actually in his true old man form but then in the later games they decided to make him de uh degrow like deform and then you know he's at a younger age to survive you know what i'm saying so that's pretty interesting facts you know still learning that even unto this day but he really looks super, super old here. Like, look at his face. He really looks like he's even way older than I've seen him in probably any Mortal Kombat game here. 
But clearly this wasn't the only time you see Shang Tsung, as clearly from this picture, then he's in his younger age form. Which is basically how everybody remembers seeing Shang Tsung in his younger age, but to any true Mortal Kombat fans that have played the games and stuff, then you all know that he's really an old man. I didn't even rank the voice, hold on. I'll say maybe. I gotta say maybe. Why should we believe you, Quan Chi? Why should we trust you? But which one of us? If Onaga is the victor, he could use that power to Yeah. Even though this even though Shang Tsung was only featured in Mortal Kombat Arm again for a brief time in conquest mode, but him and Shao Kahn and Onaga and Quan Chi, they were all together in that one scene in Mortal Kombat Con uh, Arm again conquest mode. They were only featured in a s one cutscene only, but the, the guy who voiced Shang Tsung in that cutscene wasn't bad, so respectfully give him a thumbs up. Did they reveal who it is, or did they not know who it is? Okay, they don't know who it is. Okay, never mind. So they don't know who the act voice actor is for Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat Arm again. But whoever the man is that voiced him, though, still thumbs up. Not bad. Yes. That... Even though Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe is an underrated game, but this guy, uh, what's his name? Jason Kaysen Lee. Jason Kaysen Lee actually has a really good voice for Shang Tsung, not gonna lie. Like I said, Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe is underrated and it wasn't that good of a game, but... Jason Kaysen Lee really has a good voice for Shang Tsung, I really admit, he really has a great voice. I mean, not for this game, but, I mean, well, even though this game was alright, but, you know, it's not that good of a game, but, however... The next game, I'm pretty sure it'll come up. You, you'll see what I mean. I'm just waiting for it to show up. Oh, so he didn't voice him in Mortal Kombat 9? Okay, wow. I thought that's the same guy who voiced him in Mortal Kombat 9. But Wow, okay. Well, you know what? Regardless if he if he did voice Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat 9 or not, it doesn't matter. Still, good voice though, nothing OS. Like I said, that's... That's a very underrated game. Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe wasn't that good of a game, but the guy who voiced Shang Tsung, Jason Kaysen Lee, and was pretty good. He actually has a pretty good voice for Shang Tsung, so thumbs up for him. I thought he voiced him in Mortal Kombat 9 as well, but clearly I've forgotten. I just don't usually pay attention to Shang Tsung, or, or neither do I usually pay attention to too many of the voice actors these days. I mean, when I listen to some of the voices in different games, they do sound different, but I'm not usually that good with remembering. But clearly this is the man who voiced uh, Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat 9, Andrew Kashino. But yes, definitely though, because Mortal Kombat 9 is a good game. I think, in the, I think in the story mode, I think Shang Tsung is featured in both his old form and in his younger form. It's pretty cool that when you can play as Shang Tsung, his, his, his main proper primary outfit is him in younger form, but then when you get into the arcade mode and you get up to him as the third to last boss, he's actually in his old form, and he's really hard to beat. He takes twice the amount of damage to kill in arcade mode, so he's really hard. I remember watching Mr. G Star 321, like, he's really hard, like, he takes twice the amount of damage to be killed in, in Mortal Kombat 9 arcade mode. But yes, still, as I already said. Brings back memories just hearing these clips again, honestly. It's been a while since I hadn't watched it on YouTube, watching the whole entire story mode, Mortal, Mortal Kombat 9 on YouTube. Wait, that's... What? So that wasn't Raiden? That was Shang Tsung? What? You know... Oh, yeah. Or, no, I don't remember, but... Oh, wow, okay. I just remembered now. If you remember in my Raiden voice comparison, they showed both actors who played Raiden in Mortal Kombat Legacy 1 and 2. Uh, 
I, I did mention that the Mortal Kombat Legacy 2 Raiden actor was also featured in a couple of episodes of Mortal Kombat Legacy 1, which is why, you know, when his name appeared, it said Mortal Kombat Legacy. It didn't say Legacy 2 because he did appear in some of the Mortal Kombat Legacy 1 episodes. I mean, there was another man who played him for the Raiden episode of Mortal Kombat Legacy 1, but, however, the second guy who played uh, Mortal Kombat, who played Raiden in Mortal Kombat Legacy 2 did appear in some of the episodes of Mortal Kombat Legacy 1. I think it was from other character episodes, I guess, to recruit them, you know what I'm saying? But I thought this was Raiden as well, because I do remember that Johnny Cage episode. I thought that was Raiden who came in the end and froze time and then just confronts him in a suit. I thought that was Raiden, but, wow, clearly it was Shang Tsung. I had no idea at all. I don't... He didn't even introduce himself... So, I have no idea. I thought it was the same guy, but now that I'm remembering it from seeing this picture, clearly, yeah, it was a different man, but I thought it was Raiden, though. I, Wow, it was Shang Tsung who confronted Johnny Cage at the end of his episode in Mortal Kombat Legacy 1? Wow. Had no idea at all, because I don't even know if it shows it in the end credits or not either, but apparently this was the man who played Shang Tsung to confront Johnny Cage at the end of his episode in Mortal Kombat Legacy 1. Johnson Fan, or Fan, however you say his name. Uh, I mean, he kind of looks like Shang Tsung a little bit, but his performance don't, his, him doesn't really count because he wasn't even featured in any of the later, or I don't know, did he feature in other episodes of Mortal Kombat Legacy 1? I can't remember. I'll have to probably listen for more voice clips, but I'm sure he didn't, wasn't even featured for long, you know? I mean, his performance don't really matter to me because he didn't even fight or anything else. I mean, in Mortal Kombat Legacy 2, Shang Tsung didn't fight either, but... I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I really want to count this guy or not. He was just only appearing in... This guy, as Shang Tsung, only appeared in Mortal Kombat Legacy 1 to just recruit Johnny and... Or try to get Johnny on his side. I don't know. What if I could offer you, Mr. Cage? A way out of everything. You are certain he can be turned so easily. Yeah, okay, I mean, he probably was only featured for the Johnny Cage episode, but I don't know. I don't think his performance really counts for me, honestly, but I guess without further ado, respect, I'll give him a maybe. Welcome. Hell yeah! How can you go along with this man? Kerry Haruyuki, Haruyuki uh, Tagawa? Tagawa? I think that's how you say his name, Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa. I'm pretty sure, if I'm saying his name wrong, correct me, but I'm I'm just getting the best to close to his name to saying his name as much as possible. I'll just Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa. I'm just going to call him Kerry Tagawa. But this guy is the legend, bro. He is the one and only. This man, Kerry Tagawa, he is Shang Tsung, bro. And not just because of his legendary performance in Mortal Kombat 1995. Of course, this will always be his most legendary role of him as Shang Tsung ever for the Mortal Kombat 1995 movie. Of course, that's a classic. You know, that's my favorite live-action sequel. So, of course, you know, I'm gonna love this guy as Shang Tsung. This guy is the legendary Shang Tsung. His performance was legendary. This is pretty much what... Made him famous for Shang Tsung, and just, it never gets old watching his performance. Even though Shang Tsung didn't fight towards the end of the movie in Mortal Kombat 1995, but still, his performance, his voice, and everything just really gives you the feeling that he is freaking Shang Tsung, man. He really brought the character to life with his performance. Like, he is the one true Shang Tsung. So, of course, you know, without a doubt, this guy is my number one favorite live-action Shang Tsung. Like, this guy is... Nobody can go wrong with this guy's performance, bro. He literally is Shang Tsung. There's no denying it all. And this isn't the only time he's played Shang Tsung as well. He's played Shang Tsung other times before, other than his legendary performance in the 1995 Mortal Kombat movie. You'll see. Tomorrow morning, the great combat begins. Some of you will even I guess you gotta save the best for last, you know? I think he's the last one, if I'm not mistaken. I guess you gotta save the best for last. But I'm glad because, hey, this guy is the legend, man. He's the one true Shang Tsung. No one can play Shang Tsung better than this man did, bro. Kerry Tagawa. Like I said, 
And that's where the iconic line came from as well. From him, your soul is mine. It was all from him, bro. That made some of the most iconic Shang Tsung lines ever. Like, your soul is mine and all that. Basically from him, bro. He's the one who said that line and made it famous. And yeah, as I said, this, that wasn't the only time he played him. That's why I didn't want to mention who the guy that played him in Mortal Kombat Legacy 2 was yet until they showed him. But yeah, Johnson, as you saw that guy who played him in Mortal Kombat Legacy 1, that was him. But in Mortal Kombat Legacy 2, they decided to bring Kerry Tagawa back in Mortal Kombat Legacy 2 to perform as Shang Tsung again. Although, he didn't really do anything in Mortal Kombat Legacy 2. He just only brought himself in to, like, introduce himself to Liu Kang. And then he also just appeared on the battleground to, like, be the villain, like, the leader of all the villains to say it has begun, you know, and all that. And he didn't have no hair, but, I mean, then again, he's he's he was a lot older at this time when he came back, so it, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter if he has hair or not. He's still Shang Tsung no matter what. But, like I said, his performance wasn't really that meant to be of that much compared to his 1995 performance, so I can't really give too much credit for him being in Mortal Kombat Legacy 2, but it was really great to see him again, to be Shang Tsung again for this, you know, even though that Mortal Kombat Legacy 2 movie is underrated and all that, but... It really was just so cool to see this guy come back as Shang Tsung again. I'm not sure if I'm really a big fan of the outfit either. I mean, it was cool that he was wearing a golden outfit, but it's not really Shang Tsung feeling like. I mean, like I said, so his comeback in 2013 in Mortal Kombat Legacy 2 wasn't really that important and didn't really mean anything that much since he didn't even fight. But, I mean, even in Mortal Kombat 1995 movie, as I said, he didn't fight to till towards the end of the movie. But still, it was legendary. And even if he's not fighting in here, it's still legendary as well. well. Like I said, his performance doesn't matter here as much in Mortal Kombat Legacy 2 than it compared to the 1995 movie. But still, no matter what, this guy will always be the legendary Shang Tsung no matter what. So, no matter what happened or no matter how he was booked in this movie, it was still great just to see him back as Shang Tsung, period. Like, it doesn't really matter how bad or how good that movie was. Just, it was really nice to see him playing the iconic character once again, because, come on, man, this man is Shang Tsung. He is the sorcerer, bro. He is the Mortal Kombat sorcerer, bro. There's no denying it. Like, who doesn't love this guy's performance as Shang Tsung? You really just cannot, can't not say that he is not Shang Tsung. Everybody's number one favorite live action Shang Tsung. And yep, there's another time he came back. And that was incredible as well. In Mortal Kombat Leg in Mortal Kombat eleven in twenty nineteen when they announced that uh when they announced that uh Shang Tsung was gonna be a DLC character in Mortal Kombat eleven, that was incredible as well. That not only did they make the character not only did they make Shang Tsung look like the iconic actor in Mortal Kombat eleven, that's what's really cool about it because like I said, when they when they were gonna bring Shang Tsung into this game, it was pretty cool to hear that. But it was just really so freaking awesome for two reasons. Because one is because Shang Tsung, as you could look at him on the left in the video game, he looks like the actor. Like they made Shang Tsung look like Kerry Tagawa, the actor in Mortal Kombat Legacy. I mean Mortal Kombat Eleven. They made him look like the actor, which is great. And not only that, but also when I then even found out that they even actually brought Kerry Tagawa in to voice his iconic character in Mortal Kombat 11, that's good as well. Like, for him to even come back in 2019 to voice his character again, and to even make Shang Tsung look like the actor in the game is what's incredible. So, that was so cool as well that they would bring, they would put Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat 11 as a DLC character to not only make the the character look like the actor, but to also have him be voiced by him as well, like, how can you not say this guy is not Shang Tsung, bro, how can you not, like, you can't deny him, bro, he literally made the character so iconic over the years, mainly because of his 1995 performance, but even in Mortal Kombat 11, it was still good as well, you know, like, it doesn't matter what Mortal Kombat sequel he's in or anything. He just has it all to be Shang Tsung. The voice, everything. Like, he has it, bro. He brought the character to life with his performance in 1995. And so he could also do good with voicing a character in the video game as well. There's just... Like, I'm in love with his performance as Shang Tsung, bro. You cannot... Like... 
Tell me, Mortal Kombat fans, do you not love this guy as Shang Tsung? Who doesn't? Like, even if somebody doesn't like his performance, it doesn't matter. This guy will always be the legendary Shang Tsung, bro. He is the one and only. I know I've been saying that multiple, multiple times already, but just... It's just bringing back memories, just looking at this guy and reviewing what he's already done. Like, from 1995 Mortal Kombat movie to Mortal Kombat Legacy 2, 2013, and then when he got to make his comeback again in 2019 to voice his character in Mortal Kombat 11. Like, it was so cool. Like, I remember watching the trailer, and Shang Tsung really looked like the actor. Like, in every single costume he's wearing, he looks like him. Like, this is his old form, but then... The, uh, the costume that they introduced him in the trailer was basically like him. You know, he had the black hair and no beard. Just like the way how Kerry Tagawa looked in 1995. It was cool. And I saw that they made a DLC costume for Shang Tsung in Mortal Kombat 11 where they had him dressed like the black costume that Kerry Tagawa wore, wore in Mortal Kombat 1995. Like, that is just amazing. Like, I saw they were bringing back all the movie references. I saw that. Raiden, Sonya Blade, Liu Kang... Or was it Liu Kang? I don't know. I know it was only Sonya Blade and Johnny Cage they, and Raiden. They brought back... They, 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 they put DLC characters... Uh, put DLC costumes for them to make them look like the actors from 1995, which is incredible, you know? So, of course, it was appropriate that they would put the 1995 Shang Tsung outfit into the game for, for Shang Tsung. Because, you know, I mean, he looks like the actor. Because he's voiced by the actor as well. Kerry Tagawa, Tagawa. Like, God, man. I'm... I know I feel like I'm fantasizing and probably fanboying too much over this, but God, there is no better man, no one better that can play Shang Tsung better than this man, Kerry Huyuki Tagawa. Like, I'm sorry if I keep saying his name wrong, but Kerry Huyuki Tagawa, his performance as Shang Tsung will never, and I mean never, ever get old, bro. Let's see, listen to that. Even in 2019, he still sounds good many years later from his 1995 performance. He still sounds good even after all these years. Originally, Shang Tsung was actually in the original version of the game. I mean, he was added as a character in the Aftermath version of Mortal Kombat 11, but he was actually kind of already featured in the original version. I mean, he wasn't really seen as a character, but basically... Shang Tsung was already featured in Mortal Kombat 11 in the original version. Basically, just his voice was echoing in the Crypt version, because there's a Crypt where you play as just a random character, and then, you know, Shang Tsung's guiding you around. So, he was already featured in the original version of Mortal Kombat 11 before they decided to make the Aftermath version of it, an alternate version of Mortal Kombat 11, and then bring the character into the game, you know what I'm saying? So, he was already voicing him in the crypt, you know what I'm saying? And then, like I said, when they made an Aftermath version of Mortal Kombat 11, they decided to put Chang Sung as a character in, which is incredible, you know? God. This man just will always be the legend, bro. This man will never be old. He'll never get old for being Shang Sung. Perhaps the best Shang Sung ever. I'm going to say that. He's the best Shang Tsung ever. Welp, you already know the drill, ladies and gentlemen. So, when it comes down to it, obviously for... Well, first let's start with animated-wise. So, for animated and video game-wise, uh, it's going to have to be... It's, it's going to be Andrew Kashino. Andrew Kashino. It's going to be Andrew Kashino and Jason Kaysen Lee as my two favorites for uh, for animated and video game Shang Tsung. And then for live action wise, you already know without a doubt my number one favorite live action Shang Tsung is of course Kerry Hiroyuki Tagawa without a doubt number one. And then for my second favorite live action Shang Tsung was Bruce Locke. Them two are the top notch of live action Shang Tsungs, you know. And you know what? I'll even add uh, Kerry Tagawa as animated and video game wise because you saw he voiced him in Mortal Kombat 11 as well. So you know what, Kerry Tagawa counts as both video game and live both video game and animated wise Shang Tsung and live action Shang Tsung because he's done both. He played the character in a live action movie and then made his comeback in 2019 to get to voice the character in a video game. So pretty much, pe basically, technically now there's three. Uh, well, it's really technically four picks in total, but. For Kiri Tagawa, he counts as both my favorite live-action Shang Tsung and my favorite animated video game Shang Tsung, because he did both of that. 
So, for animated and video game-wise, it's Kiri Tagawa. Andrew Kashino, sorry, I had to make sure, and Jason Kaysen Lee. And then for live action wise, as I already said, Carrie Tagawa and Bruce Lockie. So it's really a total of four. It's four in total. So that's the total of four for Shang Tsung, all four of them. But of course, number one, Carrie, just, I mean, Tagawa, man. He's always going to be number one as Shang Tsung for me. Always. Never gets old. He can, if he could play the character in a live action movie, then of course he would be great to even make the comeback and then voice him in a video game. Like, God, it, it just never gets old hearing his voice, hearing him being the iconic character he made from the 1995 movie. So, I'm sorry if I keep fantasizing and maybe being a fanboy too much about it, but that man just will. Who doesn't love his performance as Shang Tsung, man? Who doesn't? But yeah, those are my four picks for Shang Tsung. Andrew Kashino, Jason Kaysen Lee, Bruce Lockie, and Kiri Hiroyuki Tagawa. Those are my four picks in total for Shang Tsung, ladies and gentlemen. So now that my votes are in, now it's time for y'all to vote and for you to pick down below. So leave a comment down below Tell me who you love as Shang Tsung. And don't forget to leave a comment down below. Or, excuse me, I already said that. Sorry, let me repeat the whole thing again. So leave a comment down below. Let me know who you love as Shang Tsung. And don't forget to share it with all your friends to make sure they get their honest opinions and see what they say as well. Because I love to get their honest opinions on who they love as Shang Tsung as well. Like, I love to try to get as much people as possible to see who they love as Shang Tsung. So like I said, even in the comments box, you can even start a conversation, you know? Because everybody has an opinion on something, right? But anyway... Now that that's over with, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. It's about 10 o'clock, so I better go ahead and start taking a shower because I don't have that many hours left before i got to go to bed and get ready for another day at college and work tomorrow, so I better go ahead and wrap this up. So I'm going to go take a shower, y'all. I'm out of here, so good night. That'll be it for today. Guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. This like, give it a thumbs down. Join me next time for the next video. To all you boys, men, and guys out there, fist bumps go to all of you. To all the girls, ladies, and women out there, kisses go out to all of you. But until then... This is Joe Flash signing off, and have a good day. And your soul is mine. <laughs>